Released by Capcom in 2020 on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, Resident Evil 3 would be a remake of the 1999 release of the same name. Directed by Kiyohiko Sakata, who also worked on the original Resident Evils 1 through 4, and written by Yasuhisa Kawamura, who wrote the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, the game continues the reimagined timeline set by Resident Evil 2 Remake. For story, the game features veteran STARS member Jill Valentine, alongside UBCS soldier Carlos Oliveira, as their escape takes place both before and after the events of Resident Evil 2. For gameplay, combat mechanics and conventions are reused from Resident Evil 2 Remake, though instead of defensive items, both characters have knives that do not break. Both are also combat veterans with distinct maneuvers, as Jill has a dodge roll to avoid attacks and can counterattack, while Carlos can shove enemies back with a shoulder charge and punch them down. Compared to the original's areas, the park and clock tower, along with their enemies and bosses, are absent, and instead emphasis went into expanding the streets, sewers, and hospital into larger environments, while also giving more game time to Carlos. Compared to the original Tyrant Pursuer, the new Tyrant, named after Project Nemesis, is much faster and more aggressive. It can use a couple of heavy weapons, is able to grab and trip with its tentacles, can mutate zombies into more dangerous variants, and boasts faster regeneration to damage. In addition, the game features a separate multiplayer mode called Resistance, in which four players assume the role of one of seven survivors, each with unique weapons and abilities, and try to overcome the monsters and traps of a level set by another player assuming the role of one of five masterminds, each with an iconic bioweapon. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, it's September 28, 1998, as we see news coverage of a pandemic turning Raccoon City into a war zone, where according to the media, angry mobs riot and burn down buildings, violence has broken out in the street, authorities struggle to contain it, and the CDC has placed the city in emergency quarantine. At the same time, a team of Umbrella scientists put the finishing touches on a new bioweapon, loading it for transport as the container reads the codename Nemesis. Meanwhile, we see surviving STARS officer Jill Valentine still shaken by the nightmare of the Spencer Mansion two months ago, as she has a nightmare of succumbing to the infection herself and using her last rational thought to kill herself. Waking up, she reminds herself there are only three more days before her planned escape from Raccoon City, as she is continuing her investigation into Umbrella during her suspension from work. She's unsure if those few who survived are completely safe from the virus, or if they are just more resistant, or perhaps there is an extended incubation. Regardless, she has learned that Umbrella effectively controls the city, owning most of the leadership like Mayor Warren and Police Chief Irons. As Umbrella has been sending people to spy on her, she still has friends in the force, like fellow STARS Alpha Team helicopter pilot Brad Vickers, who shares that Irons disbanded STARS and he's just trying to keep his head down. As she refreshes herself from her nightmare, she gets a call from Brad, who quickly tells her she needs to get out fast, and sensing the urgency, she prepares to go when suddenly a giant wrapped in black smashes through the wall and knocks her over. As it picks her up, small firearms seem useless against it, as it lumbers after her with a single-minded focus. Glimpsing outside, she sees the streets are more chaotic than normal, as the creature somehow knows where to cut her off, grabbing her with a tendril that she quickly cuts away. Tearing apart the building as it pursues her, Jill is saved by its recklessness as part of the building comes down between them, allowing her to escape. Catching her breath, Jill bumps up her plans to leave town to sooner rather than later, as she is spotted by Brad who is nearby. He shares whatever that thing was and seems relentless in chasing down only STARS members, which is down to just them. Jill wonders how things could have escalated this fast to bring down the whole city, and Brad comments things must have snowballed since the Arclay Mansion incident. Close by, zombies over on a barricade as they quickly duck into a bar, but as he tries to hold the door, Brad gets bitten and knows what that implies. Jill doesn't want him to give up just yet, but he shoves her away, telling her to save herself. Now the only STARS member left in the city, Jill arms herself as the zombies get past Brad and catch up. Low on ammo, Jill keeps moving as a rescue chopper spots her and tells her to get to the parking garage roof right now. Starting her climb, Jill runs into a portly old man and tells him a helicopter is here to get them to safety. Not trusting it, he instead locks himself inside a shipping container, thinking it to be safer, and refuses to let her in or go along with her. Forced to leave him, she makes it to the roof and approaches the helicopter, only for it to explode in front of her. Confused, she sees the stalking menace walking towards her, and taking the offensive, Jill gets into a nearby car and starts it up, ramming it directly into the creature. It seizes her, and in her struggle, she runs them both off of the roof, falling five stories onto it, but it still doesn't seem phased by the impact. As the ensuing explosion blows away its hood, Jill sees the gruesome face of her attacker, seeing it to be a tyrant, as she now hears someone call out to get its attention. 
Reflexively, the tyrant grabs a rocket fired at it in midair and tosses it aside, but the man who fired it fires again, landing a hit and finally knocking the creature to its knees. Not wasting any time, he helps Jill away to the nearby subway station where he says he and his team have built a shelter and are gathering survivors. She asks him what he knows about the monster they saw and he has never seen anything like it, but sees it's clearly no zombie and is moving deliberately. He assures her safety as he's with the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, or UBCS for short. In disbelief, Jill spits back Umbrella is the cause of all of this, and the man doesn't know anything about that, only that he's going to shelter and she can come along or not. She chooses to follow anyway as he takes her to his captain, who spots Jill's badge and knows she is a star's elite operative. Jill introduces herself, as Captain Mikhail does the same thing while also naming Carlos, telling her their mission is to rescue citizens while clutching a painful wound. He reports that the city is cut off, most of the 100,000 people here will wind up dead or undead, and he's already lost most of his men. Jill repeats Umbrella Corporation is at fault, and Mikhail stays focused on trying to get the subway train moving as a way out and evacuate the citizens that are still alive. He asks her for her help, and reluctantly she agrees, but only for the sake of helping survivors and not Umbrella. Mikhail and Carlos thank her, as he nicknames her Super Cop and hands her a radio telling her to get geared up nearby. To the side, Jill reads that only three days ago the RPD was contacted about the third cannibal murder this month, and the tabloid suspects a link to the free healthcare patients coming from the Spencer Memorial Hospital. Carlos radios in that before they get the subway infrastructure back online, they first need to restore power at the nearby substation. Venturing out into the streets, seeing survivors scramble by reminds her to stay focused as she heads to the power substation. Carlos's directions lead her to a dead end and fiery alleyway, as the open streets mean zombies can and do encroach upon from every side. Taking advantage of hazards whenever she can, Jill passes by a toy store and cuts through a donut diner, grabbing a fire hose and getting a shotgun for the trouble ahead. Putting out the flames, she passes through a repair shop and spots an injured UBCS member inside who assures her he's not infected. Suddenly, another UBCS soldier named Nikolai enters in and promptly shoots the injured soldier in the head, killing him. Shocked, Jill shoots back he may not have been infected, and the man chuckles that it's no surprise STARS members are all dead when they're this soft. He adds that the soldier would have turned, so it was the logical thing to do to survive. He leaves, mocking her bleeding heart, and Jill learns this particular soldier was a former inmate with a life sentence hired by Umbrella to help with riot control. Despite his own refined skills and hardened life, even he was fearful of Nikolai, calling him a lunatic. She sees another fallen UBCS who was a veteran with multiple tours under his belt, and even his squad of 30 men were wiped out by the monsters in less than 48 hours. Arriving at the power substation, she finds it covered in foul-smelling cocoons and sees a note that the medicinal green herbs growing around the city are also natural bug deterrents. Masterfully unlocking the gate, Jill is suddenly ambushed by a quick overgrown mutated flea called a drain dimos. Forcing its ovipositor down her throat, it injects parasites directly into her, but before they devour her from the inside, Jill ingests a life-saving green herb and promptly vomits them out. Wading through their nest, Jill manually resets the breakers and quickly runs to turn back on the power, frying the colony with high voltage. With the power they need back on, Carlos tells her she now needs to head to the subway company's traffic control system. The calm is short-lived as Nemesis crashes through a wall right in front of her, lunging forward with powerful fists and speaking out the word stars in a guttural voice. She tries to fight while fleeing, but the monster is surprisingly quick on its feet despite its size. She radios Carlos, warning him the monster is back, and hustling to the subway control room, she manages to give Nemesis the slip long enough to plot out a viable subway route. Leaving, she encounters strange zombies with a new kind of parasite she's never seen before attached to their head, and not far, she sees this as the work of Nemesis, somehow able to implant the undead on its own. Evading their tendrils, Jill makes it back to the subway shelter, and she's greeted by Carlos as Nikolai comes in, confirming there is no hope of fighting their way out of the city against the numbers outside. He spots Jill, upset to see her, and walks away while calling her unreliable deadweight. A heavy thud alerts them that Nemesis has found them again, and Jill sends Carlos ahead, telling him it's only after her, as she leads it away from the shelter, quickly escaping through a vent that leads to the sewers. Safe for now, she's still not thrilled about the detour, but down here, she contends with bizarre pale variants of the Hunter, the Hunter Gamma, just as deadly as the normal versions. She is surprised to find a lab down here where the Hunter Gammas were grown and observed, though they were deemed a failure by Umbrella and released down in the sewers by their spiteful creator. Working her way topside, Jill radios Carlos, letting him know she's okay, and he lets her know the subways are ready to go and they're waiting for her. 
Unfortunately, she is caught again by Nemesis, who this time is armed with a giant flamethrower. And though she scrambles into a nearby building under construction, alarmed to learn it can use weapons, Nemesis is right behind her, burning the whole place down. It chases her up the scaffolding, cornering her on the roof, as it proves able to adapt to some of her strongest weaponry. Blowing up the fuel tank on its back, Nemesis falls as Jill leaps down from the collapsing building and gets away, telling Carlos it's finally dead. He's grateful, but tells her not to act as bait next time. Finding herself outside the Raccoon City Police Department, she finds the gate to the parking garage is locked, and spots the nearby Kendo gun shop. Entering, she's halted by Bob Kendo, who recognizes her and they're glad to see each other. She tells him they're using the subway to evacuate people and wants him to come along, mentioning they could use his gunsmithing talents. He agrees it's a good idea, but distracted, he declines her offer, saying he'll make other arrangements. Laughing nervously, he wishes her well and gives her a key to open up a shortcut back, as Jill overhears him tend to his daughter. Cutting through a house and its vile residence within, a still-burning nemesis catches up to her, this time armed with a laser-guided rocket launcher. Evading the explosives as best she can, she tells Carlos it's survived yet again. Hounding its quarry, Nemesis sends the mascot head of Toy Uncle tumbling with expert aim, as Carlos goes out to meet up with Jill and leads Nemesis into a trap. Tripping the monster into a gasoline tanker, Carlos blows up the tanker along with the entire gas station as he gets them both away in time. Seeing this, Jill apologizes for how harsh she was before, thanking Carlos for the save, and Carlos sends it back, reminding her she saved him first with her bravery earlier. He tells her to get on the train, but says he's gotten new orders to stay behind and help, and if it'll save the city, he's fine with it. Mikhail is impressed by Jill as well, and turns to Carlos and another UBCS soldier named Tyrell, telling them they need to find Nathaniel Bard. Concerned, Jill asks if there will be a train for them, and Mikhail says the train will return once the civilians are safe, and Carlos jokes he's not going to die and leave her in a Carlosless world. Mikhail then mentions the duo needs to find Bard, as his vaccine research could save everyone, and Jill finds Nikolai is also on the train, repeating the only life that matters is one's own. Mikhail wishes Carlos and Tyrell good luck, as they depart, and as it turns to the next day, Nikolai openly doubts the intel that Bard is even still alive. Mikhail wonders why he's so concerned, and doubts it's about teammates, and suspects him of something else. He then adds he finds it awfully suspicious how brainless zombies not only ambushed his platoon, but the gate was also locked, glaring at Nikolai and searching his face for answers. Nikolai simply smirks, but the entire train is suddenly rocked violently. Looking behind them, they see Nemesis has not only boarded, but tore the rest of the train apart, killing all civilians. As Mikhail leads her away, Jill passes by explosives while Nikolai locks the door on both of them, saying with a wink how he knows it's not after him. Mikhail tries to hold his ground, but Nemesis impales him with a tentacle and pulls him closer. Refusing to go down so easily, Mikhail clutches the explosives in his hand and detonates it, blowing himself up and sending the train off its rails. Veering off course, the subway car crashes as Jill is knocked out. Elsewhere, Carlos and Tyrell arrive at the Raccoon City Police Department, noting the mass graves outside. They hear shouting ahead and spot a police officer named Marvin fend off a zombified Brad. As Marvin laments putting down his fellow officer, he is stunned that Brad somehow says sorry back to him, though that hesitation is fatal as Brad lunges forward and takes a bite out of Marvin's side. He knocks him away and gets inside the station as Tyrell and Carlos arrive, and Tyrell moves to unlock the door while Carlos puts down the unfortunate pilot. Stepping inside the ornate lobby, Marvin is nowhere to be seen, and Tyrell searches their security, saying their intel told them Bard is in the star's office. Tyrell clarifies they are here to take him into custody, and Carlos is surprised to learn that this is suddenly less a search and rescue, and more a find and detain. As Carlos moves through the West Wing, he sees there are odd monsters here too, seeing a liquor eviscerate a pair of cops. Knowing it goes beyond the UBCS standard training for combating zombies, he calls it into Tyrell, while reappropriating some explosives to blow a hole in the wall of the shower room to make a shortcut to the star's office. Cutting through the hordes, Carlos keeps a cool head as he enters the office but sees no one there. He spots Jill's desk and an emergency call trying to come through. Picking it up, it's Dr. Bard, who says he's actually trapped in Spencer Memorial Hospital and wants stars to pick him up, but Carlos mentions RPD is overrun too. Impatient, Bard demands he do something, as Umbrella's actually killing all the researchers, and he's the only one left who knows how to make the vaccine for the zombies. After the call, Carlos doesn't feel it's right to turn him over to the company, but Tyrell points out that's not their call to make. At this time, Jill wakes up and limps out of the wreckage, getting out through a maintenance tunnel nearby the river and clock tower. Hearing the howl of Nemesis nearby, she sees it right behind her, flailing for the first time while on fire, and flopping into the river. 
Jeering, she walks away while calling Carlos, relaying how the train derailed, no one else made it, and Nikolai left them all to die. She notices something odd in the water, as now the tyrant leaps out in an advanced mutated form, larger and running on all fours. Jill can barely keep up with its speed now, as Carlos doesn't hear back from her, and heads out to find Jill first before they move to the hospital. Grenade launcher in hand, Jill faces off against a whole new breed of monster, turning the tide and knocking the creature down and out. Keeping an eye on it, the moment she turns her back, Nemesis reaches out and grabs her, but moving quickly, Jill shoots down the gate it's under to sever its arm off. However, almost immediately, it regenerates a long tentacled replacement arm, and using it, Nemesis stabs her in the arm, puncturing her with a barb as it retreats for now. Pulling the barb out, Jill immediately falls to its toxins, convulsing and foaming at the mouth, as stepping in, Nikolai grins and thanks her for the unprecedented data she has provided him. As half a day passes, Carlos finally finds Jill, unconscious and infected, but still alive. He tells Tyrell he's taking her to the hospital in the hope Bard and his cure can save her, and wastes no time carrying her away. Swiftly arriving, Carlos sets her down and Tyrell tells him Bard is in a lab to the back of the ward. Unsurprised to see zombies here too, Carlos sees Bard's lab is locked with a voice recognition lock, and Bard strangely does not open the door when he calls in. Looking for a key to bypass the lock, Carlos sees there is something else lurking in the hospital cutting off the heads of even the zombies as a massive claw almost catches him. Stepping back, Carlos sees another experimental hunter variant, the type Beta, developed by Umbrella's European branch, trading a bit of its offensive traits for much higher agility. As Carlos survives a batch of them, he bypasses the lock on the lab, only to find Dr. Bard shot and killed by someone. Focused on finding the vaccine now, Carlos learns Bard was rubbing elbows and more than that with US Senator Greg Tester, who accepted discreet payments for introducing bills for the benefit of Umbrella. Bard even warned Tester the virus could affect Capitol Hill and offered a vaccine in exchange for arrangements made to be extracted by the military and not Umbrella. Before being killed, Bard recorded a message blowing the whistle on Umbrella, knowing they were out to kill him and all loose ends. He confirms the T-Virus is a bioweapon Umbrella made, and his team was assigned to create a vaccine for it. Alongside samples stored in an underground lab, Bard mentions the Umbrella board wanted all vaccines destroyed and all evidence, including people, erased. After all, any link of a vaccine to Umbrella proves Umbrella acutely knew about the virus to begin with. Taking it in, Carlos realizes Jill was not only right about Umbrella all this time, but trusted Carlos anyway. He's mad at the constant lies surrounding Umbrella, but is now more determined than ever not to let her down as he secures a vaccine sample. Returning to Jill, he administers the dose and now waits for her to fight it back. As the next day comes, Tyrell comes in with grave news, showing Carlos how the government has decided to destroy the city in a missile strike after today, regardless of any survivors still left. Soon after, they hear their position become overrun by zombies, and holding the line, Carlos goes out to stem the flood on his own, while Tyrell works to activate the security shutters to cut them off. As the tip of the spear, Carlos punches a hole through the mob flooding in, and blows up one of the support pillars in the lobby to seal off the invading wave. Checking back, the vaccine is indeed a success as Jill recovers, prompting Carlos to leave once more, telling Tyrell to call the government and say they have a supply of vaccines in order to stall for time. Despite still having nightmares, this time of Carlos being infected, Jill wakes up alive and well, only to be greeted by a countdown to the city's annihilation. Outside, she thanks Tyrell for saving her life, and he quickly replies she has Carlos to thank for all of that. He adds that Bard stockpiled the vaccine and Carlos went to go find it, as Jill declares she's going to help him. Surprised to see such a serious facility deep underground, she spots Nikolai observing from a safe distance, but he claims to be done with her. She learns this facility is called Nest 2 and has been responsible for mass testing with the virus. She also learns Nikolai has been acting as a covert monitor, infiltrating UBCS and recording combat data of several bioweapons against the RPD, STARS, and even the UBCS. Nikolai set up in Kyle's platoon to fail, has been watching the deployment of the Tyrant, though its arrival was unexpected, and collected samples of Jill and the Project N's creature's metamorphosis. Tyrell now walks in, saying he was able to get a line through and the government is willing to call off the strike if they can deliver the vaccine before the missiles launch in a few hours. Unfortunately, even down here, Nemesis has tracked her down as it impales Tyrell while he urges her to keep going. It flings the dead soldier aside, buying Jill enough time to shut a containment door down on it as she hurries to find the cure. She learns that while the purpose of Nest was to develop new bioweapons, Nest 2's purpose was to develop vaccines for new viruses, and weapons capable of suppressing the bioweapons. 
Encountering one such new bioweapon, the rapidly regenerating Palehead, Jill follows Bard's research notes to collect necessary samples and learns Bard actually started mass production of the vaccine when he heard the T-Virus leak publicly. She sees specimens of not only rejected tyrants, but also the European model hunter Beta, learning that the European branch decided to approach the tyrant project with a parasitic organism to control it. While Bard thought parasites were much riskier than normal viruses, he both commended and dismissed their completion of the Nemesis project, noting he would now have to work on a vaccine for this too, as Jill learns this unique tyrant is called the Nemesis. Successfully synthesizing a vaccine, Jill passes through the biological disposal vat and Nemesis barges in hot on her heels. It drags her down to the vat with it as Jill drops the vaccine only for Nikolai to walk in, pick it up, and mock her yet again about failing to prioritize herself over others. He admits he's a mercenary in it for the money and strikes a deal that if she can continue to produce results with Nemesis, then maybe he'll give back the vaccine. He kicks her down, and as Jill fends off Nemesis alongside zombies assigned to be disposed of, Carlos finds her and helps out by dropping a crane on the bioweapon. He then turns on the disposal solvent as Nemesis helplessly sinks and melts away. Trying to rendezvous, Jill is intercepted by Nikolai, who says he's not done exploiting her, as both of them are knocked aside by the wriggling remains of Nemesis, somehow still alive, and evolving further from this experience. Seeking to leave before the missile strike, Nikolai decides to make his exit, as Jill sends Carlos after him, while she settles things with Nemesis once and for all. Finding an experimental ferromagnetic infantry used next generation railgun, or finger for short, Jill strikes a decisive blow but must contend with the weapon's cumbersome cooldown. Buying time, Jill primes another shot to bring the creature down, and taking no chances, jams the weapon in its face before firing, finally eliminating the pursuer tyrant model for sure. Finally rid of the menace, Jill catches up to Carlos who has been defeated by Nikolai, who kicks down Jill and tosses her the vaccine as promised, only to shoot and destroy it. He then mentions his client ordered him to reduce Umbrella to rubble, but Carlos gets a second win as he tackles Nikolai and duels him with some close quarters combat. Managing to best a spy with a grab, Jill takes the shot and strikes down Nikolai, who falls while saying everything has a price tag, even letting the world burn. He offers information on the truth in exchange for his life, and Jill and Carlos board an escape chopper, as Jill replies she doesn't mind some detective work. As the game ends, Carlos flies them out, as Jill spots the missile fly past and incinerate the city behind them. In reflection, she thinks it was more than just a virus that caused all of this, and the real source of the problem was human greed. Making the decision to take down Umbrella once and for all, we now see time pass as the vaccine vial is an unforgotten memento. Resident Evil 3 has enjoyed the success of selling over 3.6 million copies worldwide.